Tell people a little bit about your journey into the world of math. It didn't start with numbers for you. Well, I flunked my way through elementary, middle, and high school math and science. You flunked your way? I flunked. And I hated those subjects, and I thought, I have no desire or anything. I loved language. So I enlisted in the Army to study Russian, and just on a whim. And I learned Russian, ended up working as a Russian translator on Soviet trawlers up in the Bering Sea. And, but then I began realizing, you know, I was having these adventures. I, I worked at the South Pole Station in Antarctica, and that's where I met my husband. I was so going to say there was a love story in, in, in the South Pole. Yes, I say I had to go to the end of the earth to meet that man. And so I had all these great adventures, but I realized I wasn't having an adventure in here. I mean, I wasn't experiencing really a very different perspective. And I realized that, now wait a minute, if I really want to try something new, there would be nothing more alien to my personality than learning math and science. So why don't I give that a try? And so at age 26, I decided to try and retool my brain. And obviously, I'm a professor of engineering now, so it worked. But if I'd known then what I know now, it would have been so much easier. And so that's why I wrote the book. Reveal a little bit of the hints that maybe parents and students can use in order to be less fearful about learning math and science. Well, for one thing, when you look at a math book and you may not like math, what happens is the pain centers of your brain actually light up. And so what you often do is you look at it and there's a, way, there's a very easy way to get away from that. That is, switch your attention to something else and procrastinate. So instead of doing that, what you can do is you can trick your brain. You can sit there, look at, set a timer for 25 minutes and do what's called a Pomodoro. So you just work without distraction for 25 minutes on your math or whatever, and that allows you to get into the flow of things without worrying about the task that you're working on. And remember, worrying about the task, looking at something and saying, ah, oh, that's the task I've got to do, is what triggers the pain. So if you trick yourself and just say, well, I'm just going to work for 25 minutes on something and then do that, you can actually get into the flow. And that's key. You want to do a little bit every day, not a bunch cramming all at once. All right, so you set the timer there. You also mention in the book that exercise and sleep essential for good performance on exams. Absolutely. Exercise, as it turns out, is one of the few things you're always having new neurons born in your hippocampus, and that allows you to learn. How do those neurons survive? Two ways. One is you're exposed to new experiences, and the second is that you exercise. So exercise is one of the most remarkable drugs around, I mean, legal or illegal, to help you learn and remember very effectively. And sleep, what happens with sleep is your brain cells actually shrink during sleep. And during the day, all of these toxic metabolites come up, and that's what's washed away during sleep.